After thoroughly researching through all 32 NFL teams, I know the script. We're talking Super Bowl winner. We're talking awards. We're talking standings. Everything will be included in today's video, and we're starting with the NFC North. The number one team in the NFC North this year is going to be the Green Bay Packers. I took a look at their draft. They brought in a lot of defensive help. Replaced Aaron Jones with Josh Jacobs. Jordan Love is going to improve this year. I think the Packers are going to be one of the best teams in the NFC 12 and 5. NFL Network, keep Please hire me. That was insane analysis. Number two in the NFC North, the Detroit Lions. I have them at 11 and six. They pretty much brought everyone back except for CJ Gardner Johnson. Signed a lot of defensive players in free agency. Also traded for Carlton Davis. I actually don't even think he's that good, but they will be a good team if they stay healthy. 11 and six for the Lions. Third place in the NFC North, we have the Chicago Bears. I saw Caleb Williams do that. I thought it was cool. But look, they added Kevin Byer, DeAndre Swift, uh, Simone Biles' husband, Keenan Allen, Caleb Williams, Roma Dunze. Apparently, they have this fifth round draft pick named Austin Booker. He's apparently playing well in camp. I don't know why I included that. I'm just trying to, you know, get a job at NFL Network. They lost Cody Whitehair, lost Eddie Jackson this offseason. They're both washed. The fans wanted to keep Justin Fields. Kind of reminds me of Niners fans wanting to keep Jimmy G. Anyways, they went 7 10 last year, so I'm really just giving them three more wins. I think it's really rare for a rookie quarterback to put up a 10 win season, but Caleb Williams, he's in a special situation where the Bears have a roster to be able to compete immediately. Oh my God, ESPN, come get me. Last in the division, I have the Minnesota Vikings at six and 11. Now I actually really like Kevin O'Connell as a head coach, but they've had a cornerback die. Rest in peace to his soul, you know, prayers for his family. J.J. McCarthy snapped his leg. Jordan Addison, the day I'm recording this video, he just went off the field on a cart and Hawkinson could miss the first three to seven games on the schedule. And these are like their best players except for Justin Jefferson. So I don't think they're gonna be good at all six and 11 is where I have. That is the NFC North ranking here let's keep moving swiftly to the nfc east number one team in the nfc east i have the philadelphia eagles at 10 and 7 they signed saquon barkley cj gardner johnson devin white who i don't even think is that good bryce huff as well now i don't know if he's a solid product you know what i'm saying the niners you know d-line product i don't know if he's that or if he's actually nice but they also brought him in they lost fletcher cox they lost jason kelsey as well to retirement i think they addressed their biggest need which is corner they drafted two corners with the first two picks i don't really want to talk about the eagles for that long so we're just gonna keep it moving number two in the division i got the washington commanders they added a franchise quarterback in Jaden daniels that's just huge they also boosted interior O-line. Now, I don't know about their starting left tackle. His name is Cornelius Lucas. I just don't know if I could trust somebody to protect me with the name Cornelius. I don't know. They have a lot of high picks, which means they have young talent coming in, and they also brought in Bobby Wagner, Jeremy Chin, Austin Eckler, Zach Ertz. You know what I'm saying? They're bringing a lot of wash players in, but that's to help the younger talent grow. I think it should be a much better team than last year's 4-13 and teams. Adam Peters, a 49ers former assistant GM, is out there doing wonders. Third place in the NFC East, we have the Dallas Cowboys. I already know this is going to start up some controversy, all right? They, listen, they haven't done anything this offseason. Look at this list. They lost Tony Pollard, Tyron Smith, Bia Dodge, Armstrong, Fowler, Hankins, Gallimore. And they only added Eric Kendricks. They took a tackle in the draft, but like Ezekiel Elliott is your starter in 2024. Like seriously, all Cowboys hate, all Cowboys jokes aside, they're a very top heavy team. They have, you know, Lamb, Parsons. I wouldn't consider Prescott top, but I mean, he's one of their top players. I don't even know if Lamb's gonna sign. The time of recording this, him and Jerry are still beefing. Jerry doesn't want to sign him for some reason. I don't understand it. Dak Prescott's weapons are literally Jake Ferguson, Brandon Cooks, uh, Jalen Tolbert, Ezekiel Elliott. Like I think they need CD Lamb more than CD Lamb needs them. They just didn't do anything this offseason. So I got them at 8 and 9. And in last place, I have the Giants at 5 and 11. Denda Jones is the starter. There's the NFC East right there. Next up, we have the NFC South. Number one team in the division is going to be the Atlanta Falcons at 10 and 7. They got rid of Arthur Smith. They're winning the division. They went 7-10 with Arthur Smith, all right? Like, I think this team is going to do a lot better with Raheem Morris as the head coach. And we're not touching on the fact that they added a new franchise quarterback in Kirk Cousins. I know they didn't draft him any help with Michael Penix, which, you know, is kind of weird. For me, it's really weird because I actually think Michael Penix is the best quarterback in this draft. So I would have actually used the Kirk Cousins money on other players instead of not drafting Michael Penix. But I don't run the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I think they're just the best team in the division. Outside of Penix, 
defense, though, they also added a lot of defense in the draft, which I think will just help the team. Number two in the division, I have the Buccaneers at nine and eight. I'm surprised they re-signed Mike Evans. I thought he was going to go to Kansas City. I was literally about to jump off the balcony. Uh, Devin White, they lost in free agency. I don't think he's that good. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm a hater. They also lost Carlton Davis, which once again, I don't think is that big of a loss. Resign Baker Mayfield, resign Levante David, similar team, nine and eight. Third place in the division, I have a surprise. We have the Carolina Panthers at seven and 10. These guys spent their money. Now they didn't spend it on some big names, but they spent it on some very important positions. All right, they signed Robert Hunt for a hundred million dollars. Damian Lewis for $53 million, two interior offensive linemen. Davion Clowney too. Now they did lose a lot of players, but I mean, we're, we're talking about the Panthers here, right? Like they're, they're the worst team in the NFL last year. So them losing players is not that big of a deal. Matter of fact, it's probably a good thing. They acquired Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett, which are just more weapons for Bryce Young to operate with. I think they're having a much better offense this year. Even if they lost Brian Burns, I still think because they improved protection and they brought in weapons for Bryce Young, this is going to be a much better team in the future last but not least i have the saints at 6 and 11 i feel like i hate on the saints every year in these videos but like their biggest off-season signing was cedric wilson like what what do you want me to do there on defense it was willie gay and chase young and they lost Jameis. so they're 6 and 11 so there are the nfc south standings now we're moving on to the nfc west and we're starting with the greatest team in the NFL. I can't believe I do this every year. Somehow, someway, I build up false hope. Super Bowl loss after Super Bowl loss after NFC Championship loss after NFC Championship loss after Super Bowl loss. I still come up here and act like we're gonna do something big. But number one in the NFC West, I have my San Francisco 49ers at 12 and five. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like a standing ovation. We have lost our arm set. Everybody up. Yes. Everybody up. Let's go. We lost our garb set, all right? We value him at six million. That's what we offered him. Then the podcaster went on his day job, started complaining about it. Like he didn't play like 40% of the snaps while he was here. Like, don't get me wrong. He ended up signing for 14 and a half a year. But that just shows you that John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan think of Arik Armstead the same way I think of Arik Armstead. We're not paying 14 and a half for a podcaster. We also lost Ken Law, good riddance. That guy never plays. Easily one of the worst decisions we've made throughout this tenure was trading Javon Kenlaw one-on-one -on -one for DeForest Buckner, or it's the well, other way around. We're trading DeForest Buckner one-on-one -on -one for Javon Kenlaw. That is low-key up there with the three first-round picks for Trey Lance. I'm not gonna lie. Lost Chase Young, I don't care. Lost Sam Darnold, I don't care. We brought in Josh Dobbs. We brought back my guy, third in Jawan, Jawan Jennings. One of the most underrated receivers in the NFL. We also signed Leonard Floyd, who's gonna be our starting edge. Hopefully the opposite edge of Nick Bosa can actually stay healthy for a full year once because Drake Jackson can't do that. I think he's a huge upgrade compared to Chase Young. I know a lot of people love Chase Young because of, you know, his high draft pick and his name and all that, but I think Leonard Floyd's a much better player. I think he's also better than Cleveland Farrell too. We also signed a corner, Isaac Yadom. I think he's gonna start next to Charverius Ward, which is gonna allow Muddy Demo to move inside to the slot corner spot. Demo's one of my favorite players on the team right now, but at the time of recording this video, Brandon Ayu has not signed his extension. He should sign, okay? Should. But if he's missing, then we're rolling with Pearsall. Well, you know, everyone's talking about his highlights. Everybody's talking about how underrated he is, how nice he is. I gotta see it on the field. I gotta see him stay healthy. That, that's really the main thing. Because somehow, some way, when we sign all these high draft picks outside of Debo and IU, all the other ones are just getting injured left, right, and center. Now, I think we regressed this year by one win just because I don't think John Lynch has addressed O-line. He never does. Trent Williams is also not reported to camp. He's looking for for more guaranteed money. Greenlaw is also out until November. He got hurt, if you guys don't remember, from just running onto the field. And because we didn't really address O-line, I have a bold prediction for my team. I'm gonna knock on wood before I say this. I believe Brock Purdy is gonna get hurt this year. Like, we're talking Jalen Moore starting at left tackle. Jake Brendel at center. Let me repeat that. Jake Brendel at center. Our second best O-lineman is arguably John Feliciano. He got cut from the Bills. This is really bad. Like, this is an emergency. I think Brock Purdy's gonna get hurt again, but I think there's a chance that we can convince TB12 to come out of retirement and come take over for us and take us to the Super Bowl. I really hope he doesn't, man. I, 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 I,
that's my prediction for the Niners. Obviously, I hope it doesn't get hurt. Brock Purdy, he's he's our quarterback. Second place in the NFC West, I have the Rams at 10 and 7. They signed Jimmy G, who's suspended. Now, if you're wondering what he's suspended for, he's suspended two games for violating the NFL's drug policy. This guy was taking PEDs. Let me repeat that, ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy Garoppolo was performance enhancing. His performance on the Raiders was enhanced. He was cheating. Regardless, I think the Rams are still a good team. You know, I really like the draft. Uh, I don't really want to talk about the Rams that much, uh, but you know, I, I do like Jared Verse. That's all I really want to say about them. I think they're going to go 10 and seven. Next up, I have the Cardinals at nine and eight. They let go of a couple players like Efo Two and Marquise Brown. NFL Network, thank you very much. ESPN, get the contract ready. You know what I'm saying? I want to debate with Stephen A. Smith. Get me on first take with Marcus Spears and Dan Orlovsky. You know what I'm saying? They signed a bunch of defensive players. They traded Rondale Moore for Desmond Ritter. And they picked up Marvin Harrison with a healthy Kyler Murray. I think this team improves 9-8. and eight. Just keep in mind, when they had a good DeAndre Hopkins, they were a really good team. They went into the playoffs. And I think Kyler Murray had that weapon once again with Marvin Harrison. So 9-8 and eight for the Cardinals. Last in the division, I have the Seahawks at 7-10. and 10, And this is my NFC West rankings right here. Niners, Rams, Cardinals, Seahawks. And for the NFC playoffs, I have the Niners at the 1 seed. Packers right behind them on the 2 seed. I think the Niners win the tiebreaker. Eagles 3, Falcons 4, Lions 4. Five, Rams six, and I think the Bears squeak into the playoffs in Caleb Williams' first season. Now let's move on to the AFC. Starting with the AFC North, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. I have them winning the division this year at 11 and six. They lost the division last year actually at nine and eight, but I think it's good that they didn't actually lose T. Higgins. They have Zach Moss who replaces Joe Mixon. I actually don't like Joe Mixon at all. He sold my fantasy team like three years ago. Ever since then, I've just developed this hatred for him. I think Zach Moss is better than him. They spent their first round pick on a tackle as well. I still think they're a championship contender as long as they can protect Joe Burrow. With T. Higgins and Jamar Chase on the outside, that's good enough to bring them to 11 and 6. Second in the division, I have the Baltimore Ravens at 10 and 7. Their biggest splash this offseason was signing Justin Madden Buike for four years, $98. $98, $98 million. Sorry, ESPN. Hold on. I was about to ask for another contract. They also acquired some guy named Derrick Henry. Other than those two, though, they didn't really do that much. They didn't acquire anyone via trade. They didn't sign anyone else in free agency. They actually lost a lot of players, too. But, you know, I still think they'll be in the playoffs again. You have the threat now of either facing Lamar Jackson or Derrick Henry running at you downhill. Like, that is just enough problems for 10 wins. In third place, I have the Cleveland Browns, also at 10 and 7. They added Jared Judy. They added Jameis Winston. Now, I know they lost Flacco, but they added Jameis Winston. They also lost two of their linebackers. They didn't really make a big splash of free agency, and they really can't do anything because of Deshaun's contract. I don't know if Deshaun Watson will actually start playing like Houston Texans Deshaun Watson, or if he's just going to still play like ass, but to me, they just look like a 10-7 and 7 squad. They still have Stefanski, who I think is a great coach. But yeah, there's nothing that really pops to me about the Cleveland Browns with their offseason and how they drafted. And last place in the divisions, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers, but also at a 10-7 and 7 record. This is the most stacked division. 11 and 6, 10 and 7, 10 and 7, 10 and 7. They added Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Mid and mid. But it's better than Kenny Pickett though. So technically the Steelers upgraded at quarterback. They added Patrick Queen from the Ravens, which I think is absolutely insane. Like I think that's as crazy as adding Saquon to the Eagles. They lost Patrick Peterson, lost Deontay Johnson. They also drafted two old linemen and took Roman Wilson in the third round, who's the wide receiver from Michigan. God, man, come on. ESPN! So I do think they improved from last year. I think they were a 9-8 and eight team, if I'm not mistaken, because they improved their offensive line and their quarterback. But at the end of the day, they improved their quarterback position from Kenny Pickett to Russell Wilson. So I know they improved, but like it's Russell Wilson that's your starting quarterback. And this division is always really competitive, so I don't know. I think they're going to be last place in the division. This is the AFC North. AFC East, this is one of the toughest divisions that I had to do. I'm not going to lie. I have the New York Jets winning the division. I can't believe this myself either. I can't believe I just said that. I have them at 10 and 7. Uh, I think the Hassan Reddick situation is really just shows the dysfunction of the New York Jets. They trade for Hassan Reddick for a third round pick. They somehow believe trading for him will make him not want to get paid more guaranteed money like why would Hassan Reddick want more money from the Eagles and then take less money 
to play for the Jets. Like, that just doesn't make sense. So I don't know what they were thinking with that situation. Like, how would you think acquiring Hassan Reddick and not paying him would work? Like, you thought he would just play just because he got traded? It's just stupid, man. But they still got Aaron Rodgers. Technically, it's his first year. They didn't add two old-ass tackles. One of them was Tyron Smith. I forgot the other one, low-key ESPN. Please forgive me. But they also drafted tackles. So clearly, their priority this offseason was to protect Aaron Rodgers after he got injured just four snaps into the season last year. I just think this year, they have the best roster in the AFC East. I, I really really can't believe I'm saying that, but I do think from top to bottom, their roster is the best quality, at least, at least on paper. Can't believe I'm doing this again, but I'm buying Jet stock this year, and I think this is going to be one of those predictions where I look back on at the end of the year, and I think to myself, why the hell did I say this? Second in the division, I have the Miami Dolphins at 9-8. and eight. It's weird. They signed Jordan Poyer. They signed Jordan Brooks, but they lost Christian Wilkins. They lost Robert Hunt. They lost Xavier uh, Howard. Jerome Baker, Cedric Wilson. Like, they lost a lot of players low-key, but I can't see them going on under 500, so I have them at the bare minimum at 9 and 8. Buffalo Bills, third in the division at 7 and 10. They lost Stefan Diggs, obviously. They also cut Mitch Morse. You know what I'm saying? Center. What's y'all know about Mitch Morris? You know what I mean? They also lost Gabe Davis too, not just Stefan Diggs. That's two of their receivers. Now I know they drafted Keon Coleman, who I think is gonna be a great player in the NFL, but Shakir, Curtis Samuel, Coleman, Kincaid, Cook with Allen. Like, I just don't think that's good. And I also don't think their defensive starters are that good either. I honestly I think this team regresses. Like Josh Allen is the only good player on this team. But I think they go seven and ten. And last but not least, I have the New England Patriots. Now I have them at six and eleven, though, which might be more than what Patriots fans are expected. They signed Jacoby Brissett for like the seventh time in his career. They also brought in KJ Osborne. They also brought in Sione Taki Taki. They drafted Drake May, who is a project. I don't think he's going to play this year. Just to have a new head coach, usually that brings in a couple more wins, but I don't think they're going to be a good team 6-11 for the Patriots. That is the AFC East rankings there. Let's move on to the AFC South. I have the number one team in the AFC South as the Houston Texans at 11-6. They added Stefan Diggs, obviously. They added Added a Z. Del Shire. That's an ex 49er. That's my guy right there. That might be their star linebacker, low key. They also added Daniel Hunter next to Will Anderson, which I think is a huge, huge, huge pickup. And they added Joe Mixon. Now, I read this article that says Joe Mixon gives the Texans that similar pop to what Christian McCaffrey does for the 49ers. I literally just stopped my research for the Texans. I, I couldn't keep reading. But look, they made a ton of defensive additions. They didn't lose anyone that important on offense. Added Stefan Diggs. CJ Stroud's going to improve this year. He's arguably an MVP candidate. I have the Texans winning this division. Second in the division, I have the Indianapolis Colts. This is low-key my sleeper team. They have one of the best linebacker cores in the NFL. They signed Joe Flacco in case Anthony Richardson decides to play like how he played in college. They didn't lose anyone important, and they drafted two players that can help the roster right now in Law 2 and A.D. Mitchell. They have their starting QB back. I think this team jumps to 11 and 6. Third place in the division, I have the Jaguars at 10 and 7. Signed my boy Mitch Morris. What you know about Mitch Morris? And they signed Gabe Davis too. They low-key just hit a lick on the Buffalo Bills. And, and Arik. They signed Arik too to 14.5. That, that's how you know Trent Balky is just the dumbest GM ever. Uh, they lost Calvin Ridley to the Titans. Random, but they drafted BTJ with the 23rd overall pick in the NFL draft this year out of LSU. Oh my God, CBS Sports. Come get your boy. He's expected to be that guy. I think he's gonna be a really good player. Usually wide receivers from LSU are always pan out well. Uh, they also extended Trevor Lawrence this off season and they extended Josh Allen, who I think is a really, really good defensive player. They still have Christian Kirk on the squad as well. It's just a mid team overall, but I do have them at 10 and seven. I do think they improved by one win. And last but not least, I have the Tennessee Titans at 6 and 11. They fired Mike Rabel, which I think was the only piece that was kind of holding this team together. They also just have 13 new starters. All right, let me read this out to you guys. They have a new running back, two new wide receivers, a new left tackle, a new center, a new right guard, a new right tackle, two new D linemen, two new linebackers, and two cornerbacks. That's damn near the whole squad. And I'm not really sold on Will Levis yet either, so I have this team at the bottom of the division at 6 and 11. This is the AFC South standings. Last but not least, AFC West, I have the Chiefs at 13 and 4. I have the Chargers at 11 and 6 at number 2. Jim Harbaugh's first year. My guy, my brother, my coach, man. I know they lost Mike Williams, but that man barely played anyways. He plays like four games a year and he like shows up for like two of them. They lost Austin Eckler. They lost Keenan Allen, but I think with a new offensive coordinator like Greg Roman who, you know, really likes to run the ball, they're going to be one of those more grittier, more stronger teams. You know what I'm saying? Tougher to beat teams, which is what I really think they needed. Harbaugh usually 
always has those nasty, physical, heavy hitting teams. So I think that's what they're building over there at the Chargers. And I think this will help them be more structured, which will make them 11 and six. In third place, I have the Denver Broncos at seven and 10. Bo Nix is their starting quarterback this year. I'm just not really excited about anything on their depth chart. Outside of Sertan, I really just don't see a single star. Last place, I have the worst team in the NFL, the Las Vegas Raiders at 3 and 14. This is the worst team in the NFL. Devontae Adams, he needs to escape. Jacoby Myers needs to escape. They brought in Brock Bowers, but honestly, like this is just all on quarterback play. Their quarterback depth chart is Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. They lost Josh Jacobs too, so the run game is just gone as well. I just don't know how they'll win games. Like, I know they have good offensive weapons, and I know they have Max Crosby, but with nobody actually throwing to these offensive weapons, I just don't see how they put up points on the board. So I have the Raiders at 3-14, and 14, and that is the final AFC West standings right there. Let's move on to the AFC playoffs. I have the Chiefs at the 1 seed, Bengals 2, Texans 3, Jets 4, and for the wild card, I have the Colts at 5, Chargers at 6, Ravens at 7. We're going to get on to our Super Bowl predictions later on in this video, but first, let me touch on the awards. Let's start with Coach of the Year. I got Shane Steichen. I think he designs an offense that is perfect for Anthony Richardson. And like I said earlier, the Colts are my sleeper team, so I have them at 11-6, and six, and Shane Steichen's going to take him there. Why well, I have him winning Coach of the Year. He's also white. I feel like voters just like that more, and also he's an offensive guy. You know, we see Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, uh, McDaniel, LaFleur, you know what I'm saying? He fits that kind of mold. Defensive rookie of the year i have jared verse from the los angeles rams i don't want to talk about him too much because he is a ram but i, I do think he is a good player he's, he's kind of nice i don't think he's aaron donald but i definitely think he touches purdy i'm scared just jared verse though honestly like the rest of the rams like they all suck all right defensive player of the year i have josh Hines Allen. It's always a pass rusher, all right? It's always somebody on the D-line. He's going to get a ton of sacks, and I think he's going to get credit for it, all right? Defensive player of the year, Josh Hines Allen. Offensive player of the year, I have Brees Hall. Now, if he can stay healthy for a full year, I think he's going to win this award. If the Jets are, like how I said earlier, going to be the division winners, Brees Hall is going to play a big part in that. I think he's a great player when he's healthy. It's just a matter of fact of if he can stay healthy over the course of the season or not. I'm praying that he does, because he is a really exciting football player. Realistically speaking, is probably gonna go with my boy C Mac. But we're gonna go off the board a bit and go with Brees Hall, all right? Now, my MVP prediction I tried so hard not to say Brock Purdy, but I think Brock Purdy's gonna get hurt this year. Tom Brady's gonna come in and he's gonna take us to the prom slam. Therefore, my MVP for the 24 25 NFL season is Jordan Love. When we play Jordan Love, I finally got to see how good this guy is. I didn't think he would be this good, but this guy looks next level, man. And he's just got a bunch of offensive talents on that team. He also has an offensive head coach. I think his production this year is going to be insane. That's why I have the Packers at 12 and 5. Like, I think they're going to be a really good team. And honestly, this was tough. It was either between Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, or CJ Stroud for me. I think Jordan Love takes the cake, man, because Mahomes doesn't really try the regular season. And I don't think they're going to give it to Lamar Jackson back-to-back -back MVPs. I don't think they're going to do that. Now let's move on finally to my Super Bowl prediction to end off this video. Out of the NFC, I still have your San Francisco 49ers making it. I can't take another Super Bowl loss. I, I can't do it. I, I just can't. I just don't see Tom Brady losing for us in the playoffs. I don't care if he's 57. I don't see it, man. And in the AFC, I don't want to see the Chiefs. So you know what? I'm going to say the LA Chargers are going to make it. I genuinely think they're going to be a good team, man. I, I know they lost Keenan Allen. I know they lost Mike Williams. I know they lost Austin Eckler. But honestly, man, Jim Harbaugh really makes a difference. That is a huge upgrade over Brandon Staley. I'm telling you guys, Jim Harbaugh is a great coach, man. And in the Super Bowl, I have the 49ers beating the LA Chargers 28 to 22. Tom Brady Super Bowl MVP. Please. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of my predictions in the comments down below. I also want you guys to leave your wild takes of what you guys think is going to happen this year in the comments down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. More NFL videos are coming out soon. Unfortunately, I am actually coming back to watch the sport. I got excited while I was researching for this video. I, I think I just love football, man. I, and I, I, I don't know if I can get rid of it in my life. I told myself I would, but I love this man. I, I just love pigskin. <laughs>